Kia ora koutou, mālo lele. Welcome to the third collective music industry hui. I'm Teresa Patterson. I'm the chair of the Music Managers Forum and I am your moderator today. And a very happy New Zealand Music Month to you all. And it's the 20th anniversary, which is making me feel super old because I can totally remember the first one. But it is very fitting this year that the theme is support local, stream local, follow local, buy local. So naturally, New Zealand Music Month is our focus for today's seminar, along with the updates on what the music org organizations have been doing since our last collective hui. If any of you are watching, want to, have, want to ask any questions, please just do it via the comments section, Facebook Live, and via YouTube, and um, we'll get to them as we go along through the um, hui. So over to today's panel, we are very honored to have Nadia Marsh, Music Coordinator, Te Mangapaho, Diana Marsh, Executive Director, Sounds, Damien Vaughan, CEO, Recorded Music New Zealand, Victoria Kelly, Director of New Zealand Member Services, APRA AMCOS New Zealand, David Riddler, Head of Music, NZ On Air, Kath Anderson, Chief Executive, New Zealand Music Commission, Rose Campbell, Arts Practice Director for Music and Opera, Creative New Zealand, and Peter Dickens, General Manager of Music Helps. Fabulous big panel today. And much aroha to all of you for taking part in today's hui. And before you start your update, I'm going to be asking each of you which New Zealand artists you've been listening to during Music Month. It can be a new discovery or an old favourite. Myself, I have been listening to Rhea Hall's latest album that was released in February and also Red Fountain's new album that was released at the beginning of the month. And I can highly recommend that you go and check both of those albums out. We'll start off with Kath, natural start for the New Zealand Music Month special. Congrats on the amazing launch and start to Music Month. And before you begin to talk about what else you've got planned for the month, what New Zealand music have you been listening to? You're on mute. Uh, I'm muted by the host. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, happy New Zealand Music Month to all. Uh, Starting off with what I've been listening to, uh, I'm really liking the new uh, Millie to Back in the Milltone single. A uh, beautiful video, it sounds fantastic as well. Uh, so very much enjoying that, playing it through the big speakers and really liking the new King Sweetie single as well. So King Sweetie, there's uh, Cass Basil from Tiny Ruins and Beckronger, their new track. So uh, let's just stay in bed, it's, it's a lovely little pop tune. Right, so um, what has the Music Commission got planned for the rest of Music Month? Um, well, there's lots going on this month, actually. It's been so different, sort of organising everything to be at an online-focused event and ourselves being um, in a position where we've kind of got to change everything we've planned on doing, but it's actually going really well. Um, we've, I guess in the first instance, transformed our gig guide to be an event guide. So uh, if you go to the New Zealand Music Month website, which is nzmusicmonth.co.nz, the event guide is there listing all the online streaming events and promotions that are happening every day. Um, we have also a little box right at the bottom of that newsletter where you can sign up, um, right at the bottom of the website, where you can sign up for a weekly newsletter, letting you know the what's coming up and uh, what things to look out for in the next week. So those newsletters come out every Tuesday. But speaking of newsletters, um, we're also really keen to make sure we've got as many online streaming events as possible listed in the gig guide. So if anybody out there has anything coming up, please email julia at nzmusic.org.nz and let Julia know and fire through any information you've got about new singles, albums, EPs, things coming out, so we can include the news on our website. I mean, the theme for Music Month this year is support local, stream local, follow local and buy local. And I just wanted to take a minute to have a chat about that because I think it's really important, particularly now, that our artists are supported in every way possible. So support local is pretty obvious and it goes without saying. I mean, stream local, um, I don't know if people realize how much New Zealand is streamed. It's around about 200 million songs every week get streamed in New Zealand across all the different services. So stream local, make your choice and find a New Zealand band that you want to listen to and maybe discover something new as well. Follow local is all about the algorithm. 
So the algorithm is what streaming platforms and um, online services use to sort of computerize decide what they're going to serve you next. So if you follow an artist on a streaming service or subscribe to their channels, it actually pushes the artist far further up the algorithm than just streaming. So yeah, there's lots of different kind of uh, theories and not everyone will say exactly what their algorithm does publicly, but anecdotally, uh, one follower is worth of anywhere between 150 to 200 streams. So by following the artists that you like, it's more likely that their music will end up in other people's playlists and being served to others, so they can be discovered too. Um, follow local does not mean following artists in the street, and it does not mean stalking them at the local shops, because a couple of people have actually asked that question, so uh, just to be clear, follow them on streaming platforms and uh, online music services. And then buy local. Buy local from your local record store, buy local direct from your artist, you know, buy local and grow your online music collection through um, digital downloads. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can support artists directly by putting money in their pocket. So find their preferred services by looking at their channels. Um, we have just published uh, the main book for this year. So the main book is a New Zealand music industry handbook that we put out every May. It's got information about um, neighbouring rights from recorded music. It's got a great piece from the MME from their tips about how to support local. Uh, information about IMNZ, the Music Commission, and some articles about you know, how to encourage people to find you online, going viral, making money online. So the link to that this year is on the front page of our website. We've done a digital version because although we normally publish these as hard handbooks and have them at libraries, schools, tertiary institutes and all the different kinds of seminars and things like that that we would do in May, obviously this year we haven't been able to get to the printers. So there's a digital version online that you can find on the front page of nzmusic.org.nz. Um, also on our website, because the printers are closed, is we haven't been able to do posters this year. So we've uh, put a link up there so people can download their own Music Month poster and print them in whatever size they like. There's two Tarawa versions and uh, three standard versions, so they're just all there on the website if you felt like getting your own poster too. Um, also, coming up later in the month, we have the New Zealand Music Month Summit. So that's going to be on Saturday the 23rd of May. Uh, we work with our partners at the Music Managers Forum to put on the summit each year. And it's going to be an online version this year. So you'll be able to find out all the details when they're announced on Monday. But I can tell you there's going to be four sessions. We're going to be talking about things like merchandising with some really great guests on that. Uh, Liz from The Best, uh, Tata from Tomorrow People, Paul from Devil Skin, Anthony Thomas. We're going to be talking to music producers about the, the production environment in New Zealand. We're going to be talking uh, about Benny, because Benny is really making a massive impact worldwide. So talking with her manager, Paul McKessa, about some of the things she's been doing both here and internationally in the last few months. And it uh, should be a really interesting day. So there'll be four sessions, we'll go most of the day, and you'll be able to watch that live. Um, speaking of Benny, actually, um, I noticed uh, when I was going through the international newsletter that we put out this morning, she's got so much going on overseas at the moment. It's quite incredible. There's a stories in Pitchfork and the LA Times and stories in the NME. So uh, what is happening whilst New Zealanders are all staying at home and sheltering in place is there is still New Zealand music getting out into the world. It's uh, just getting there differently. So we do publish an international newsletter which goes out in the first week of every month. You can find that on our website in the international section and catch up with what New Zealand artists are doing overseas. Um, there are loads of different things going on, all over radio, heaps of TV things. Ewe Radio has been amazing. Student Radio have got 100% New Zealand Music Weeks coming up. So uh, rather than talking forever, I will just say have a look at uh, the website and the newsletters and get some information there. Um, the last thing I just wanted to mention before handing on this morning is uh, Save Our Venues, a, a campaign to support local venues in New Zealand who are doing it really tough. They haven't been able to open the doors for a long time. And normally in May, they'd be really busy. So uh, have a look at Save Our Venues on the Booster platform and uh, find your favourite local venue that you'd like to support. Awesome, thank you so much um, for that, Kath. And um, yes, definitely everyone, please check out Save Our Venues. Um, there have been some really successful booster campaigns coming out of that. With Didn't the Whammy one have the um, quickest um, fundraising to reach their target 
within 24 hours or something like that. Yeah, I understand that was the most successful campaign on Boosted in the shortest period of time, which, which is incredible. Awesome. Shows how much love there is for local venues out there. So uh, it would be great if we could spread the love even further around the country. I know Cabana and uh, Nate Care have got their campaign up now, Dog With Two Tails in Dunedin, uh, Sam Fran in Wellington. So there are lots of great live local music venues to support. And super important because once we come out of lockdown and once we know what the parameters are around um, being able to attend live gigs, we need to actually have the venues to attend the live gigs. Um, thanks so much for that, Kath. And next up, we're going to be talking to David from NZ On Air. David, what NZ music have you been listening to? But like you, T, I've been obsessed with the new Reb Fountain album. I just think it's an amazing piece of work at just every song. And um, yeah, I'm just, I, I was really excited when the single started dropping, Samson, et cetera, and then listening to the whole record from Friday. And I just, yeah, I'm pretty obsessed pretty obsessed um and i've also been um in the while i've been working during the day i see that our aotearoa all day playlist is now up to 30 hours so it's almost a whole working week's worth of new zealand music um and it's really varied <coughs> excuse me so multi multi genre multi era um and it's actually a really good listen so you can play it as sequenced or or um shuffle it and it's really good so those are my kind of listening obsessions at the moment I must admit that um, I do often listen to the NZ On Air um, playlist. There's a few there. And um, it's a good way to, um, like the Fresh Finds one's great. And yeah. Good to hear. I'll pass that on to Ash, who does our playlist. That's great. Um, so look, in terms of NZ On Air updates, I'll do some, <coughs> so, sorry, got a little frog. Um, just a couple of things to note, and then I'll talk a little bit about New Zealand Music Month as well, because obviously that's a really big focus for us also. And um, thanks, Kath, for laying out all of that. There's so much great stuff going on. So um, even though we can't gather in the same place to celebrate New Zealand Music Month, I think there's a huge amount of great things going on. Um, first up, I just wanted to remind people that our focus round for New Music Pacifica is now live. It's opened, opened this morning. Um, so that's that's on our newmusicsingles.nzonair.govt.nz site that most people who have applied for singles in the past uh, will be familiar with, but it's all linked through our website, etc. Um, that's just open for two weeks, and that closes on the 21st of May. Um, so that's for artists with Pacific Island heritage or Pacifica um, influence. So, um, and that's really to partner with, we're partnered for that with Pacific Music Awards Trust. And I was really pleased to see some of our New Music Pacifica recipients from last year's focus round came through and were nominated for Pacific Music Awards this year. So that's a great sort of follow through there. Um, and also Pacific Media Network, our friends there, um, assisting us with that as well. So that's open at the moment. Uh, one major change we've made to New Music Single uh, applications is we're now only opening those rounds for three weeks before deadline rather than having them open perpetually. So that's going to be quite a shift for some people. Um, so we will do lots of noise around when the round opens and when it closes, but we're not going to have it open 24-7 all the time. So that's a change that we've made. And there will be a few little tweaks to the New Music Single process over the next few weeks. So we'll open that round on the 2nd of June. Um, in terms of New Zealand Music Month, there have been, we have been blown away by how many releases there have actually been this month already. And we're only, what, seven days in. It's been really, really busy. And a lot of um, stuff that we've supported with investment has come out lately, like the Red Fountain album, like the um, Millie Tobacco, the Miltone single, etc. Um, but we've actually been throwing back a bit because it is 20 years of New Zealand Music Month. So the team came up with a list of iconic albums that we thought would be great to celebrate over May. So we're posting uh, the album cover and a music video associated with that record um, every day in May. So, so far we've been through um, Catch Fire, the albums from Catch Fire, Aradna, Gin Wigmore, Alien Weaponry, Good Shirt, and we kicked off on Friday with um, Shea Fu, which was a nice little throwback to about 2001. Um, and so that's been really fun and we will we will continue to do that throughout, throughout May. I noticed that um, the Good Shirt um, video for Sophie came back up, popped that back up last night and quite a few bits of love and comments on that. So that's something that we're doing just to recognise that it has been quite an amazing 20 years of music in New Zealand and that's one way that we thought we could celebrate New Zealand Music Month. 
Um, in terms of the radio stations that we um, deal with, as Kath mentioned, Student Radio are doing, um, they're always huge supporters of New Zealand music, but four out of five of those are doing the 100% New Zealand Music Week at the end of May. And then I think BFM are doing theirs in the second to last week of May. Um, Ewe Radio, uh, a lot of other uh, radio stations around the country, and then also the, um, the networks like ZM and The Edge, More FM, The Hits, My, Flavor, Hauraki, The Rock, George and The Breeze. We've teed up big promotions for New Zealand Music Month on all of those radio stations. Um, Apple Music have been plastering New Zealand Music and New Zealand Music Month all over their home screens in New Zealand. So um, that's been really great. We've been working with them on featuring some of our playlists and people who use Apple Music will be getting New Zealand Music straight in their face straight away as soon as they um, open that app at the moment. Um, Spotify are featuring Benny. She's taken over their Listen Local um, playlist this week. And there's a few other things in the pipeline with Spotify. Um, so look, there is lots on, as Kath said, um, there's lots of noise and I feel like it's some positivity in amongst all of the, the recent doom and gloom. It feels like we're in a new month and um, there's lots of great music around and we should celebrate that. Awesome. Thanks so much, David, for that update. Um, we've actually got a few questions around funding, but I think we'll come back to them after we've been through all the panellists. Um, so next, um, Diana, kia ora, welcome. Um, it's your first time to this panel. It's lovely to have you here. Tell me what New Zealand music have you been listening to? Well, kia ora koto. I've been listening to John Thurs's No Man's Land and some works by Selena Fisher. And this morning I was listening to a work called The People from a new, new Sounds composer. He's just signed up with Sounds, uh, Louis Baker. So yeah, but there's lots. Of, I've, we've got a concert hall constantly pumping out our videos. And um, so I've been actually listening to so much. It's hard to remember everybody. Um, it's been constant. Yeah. Good on you. It's got it's like like your own little radio station happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like that, yeah. So what's been happening over at Sounds? Well, we launched New Zealand Music Month with a work from a Chinese New Zealand composer called Gao Ping, and um, it was a tribute to the doctor, Dr. Wing Liang, who was a whistleblower on the pandemic in China, and then subsequently died at the age of 33, one of its first victims. And we, um, the composer is now based in Chengdu, and he wrote this work to as a tribute to him and we had it filmed in the homes of Amalia Hall violinist and um, Stephen De Pledge pianist and we put it up online and we've had a lot of uh, you know a large number of views and it just felt a fitting thing to do for the launch of New Zealand Music Month. Um, we also have now opened up applications for the Sounds Contemporary Award as part of the APRA Silver Scrolls and that really is for composers from the classical genre, contemporary classical, um, sound art and crossover works. So um, that's open until the 31st of May and of course is presented as part of the APRA Silver Scrolls. And you can go onto our website and go to the news and blog section of it of the website and the um, information about the award is there. Our website is sounds.org.nz. We've also, um, as part of New Zealand Music Month, launched a Tongapora series uh, presented by Jerome Kavanagh. Again, he filmed it in, during lockdown and we're releasing two films per month. Uh, sorry, two films per week this month. We introduced an introductory um, film and um, where Jerome talks about the series and what he's going to present and a bit of background to him and his, his mahi and um, we've got the introductory plus eight films and it just takes you through different instruments you know um, as part of the Tongapura grouping of instruments and what they're used for and the background to them. Um, we also a couple of weeks ago launched um, or put out a, a a video that again he'd filmed during lockdown um, of called Oro Atua, which is a sound healing journey. So that's available on our YouTube channel. You just go to YouTube and search sounds. Um, we've also had this concert hall going throughout um, the lockdown period. And again, you can find that on our news, news and blog section. We had regular updates and there's now a lot of content out um, you know, um, and about. So we, we now update them every week. And to, today we're launching a new concert from the New Zealand Trio, a variety of works. And um, I think that's about it from us for now. Actually, thanks so much, Tyna. And I actually thought before I introduced you, I should have asked you, since you're new to the panel, just to explain what Sounds is, for those of you out there that don't know. 
Right, well, Sounds um, promotes and champions the work of New Zealand composers. We used to focus predominantly on classical music, contemporary classical music, sound art, electroacoustic acoustic music, but we've also brought, branched out into Māori music and Māori composers. And we, um, we make and produce films and put them online with the support of NZ On Air. We um, collect works and scores and we sell them. We work with a lot of partner organisations like the NZSO Radio New Zealand to offer opportunities, development opportunities and promotion opportunities for artists. Um, and um, yeah, we give advice, curation advice to a lot of organisations, uh, predominantly classical music organisations such as the NZSO, Orchestra Wellington, um, on, on what is appropriate to programme um, in their concert series. Um, and we just provide a, a variety of advice and support. Oh, that's great. So great to have you um, on this panel today as well. Thanks so much, Diane. Well, thank you for inviting me to join. Nadia, what's been happening, before I ask you actually what's been happening at Te Pāho, what have you been listening to? Um, yeah, actually I've been stuck on an album that was led by Rob Ruha, it's called Moho, and it's, it's quite unique for the fact that it was recorded all in one take, it was all done live, and there's a video presentation that goes with it, it's fantastic, there's, you know, over 15 artists all and squished into the studio it's yeah it's very intimate and dynamic but it's sort of in the uh soul gospel genre and all in te reo maori so yeah that's i've been jamming that for the last however long it's been out five months i can't get off it so that's my recommendation well, i'm gonna go check that out for sure <laughs> so um what's been happening with you hey look new zealand music month is really um Firstly, happy New Zealand Music Month, but it's really uh, the first time Te Mangai Pāho has, has um, really um, expressed itself in this space, um, despite having funded um, music for a long time. So this month we've got, we've introduced a new music funding round, and it's unique and quite experimental uh, for the fact that it is really investing in the composition phase of songwriting and we're really looking to see new collaborations in te reo maori the fund is open to anyone doesn't matter where you sit on the musical spectrum or the te reo maori spectrum beginners um, fluent speakers whether you have none but you're interested you want to give te reo maori a go um, throw your name into the ring we'll play matchmaker we feel like we're we know everyone or we can know everyone and we're happy to pair people up so that we get some new sounds and some and new te reo maori songs into the pipeline so once we come out of lockdown we can record them all and then we'll have you know a, a great flow of of new music coming out which is in te reo maori the songs don't have to be 100 percent is the other thing and also because it's the songwriting phase we don't necessarily expect the people who are writing the songs to be the performers of the songs. But so just jump into the round, let's make some new music. That's our big thing this New Zealand Music Month. But on top of that, we've got, um, uh, we've just jumped into the Spotify uh, world ourselves. So we have a playlist, which as I told the panel earlier this week, it's mostly my family on the playlist. So we could do with some followers guys. That would be really fantastic. Um, so check out that playlist that's called Real Rotates and it basically follows what every radio have been championing over the last 12 months. And we are running a little campaign on our Facebook page, the Te Maungai Pāho Facebook page called Te Reo Track Two Day. So every Tuesday we've got a new Te Reo song coming up with um, a live performance from the artist that's releasing that song. So those are our main things this month, um, but if you need any information about us, our music funding rounds, you can find that at tmp.govt.nz. Awesome, thanks so much, Shadia. That's really super exciting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, before we get into the uh, APRA AMCOS update, what New Zealand music have you been listening to? I, well, we've been having a bit of a New Zealand music fest at our house because my husband's been putting together a playlist he plays an NZ trio and he's been creating a playlist for them. So we've been listening to loads of stuff as he's been deciding what to put on it and revisiting old favourites. And um, so the two songs that I've really been thrashing are um, 
I'll Breathe For You by Mahi Narangi Toka and David Downs, which is just one of the most beautiful songs ever written, in my opinion. And another one of the most beautiful songs ever written, in my opinion, um, is a song called Dirge by the Villains, um, which is a deep, dark, gorgeous, kind of lugubrious song that I um, kind of think is kind of reflects a little bit how I've been feeling, which is, you know, I'm, I'm feeling good, but I'm also aware of this kind of weight around the world and it's a beautiful song, it's, yeah. And apart from that, um, Ash and I also sometimes after a couple of wines like to practice recorded duets um, of early television themes. And so for Music Month in New Zealand, we're going to work up Close to Home by Jack Body because that's a classic New Zealand television theme. And, you know, we've done Chips, we've done um, Knight Rider, and now it's time, I think, to do something local. I really, wish that I, hear was, it. I really wish that I was part of your bubble, Victoria. That sounds like <laughs> a whole lot of fun. I don't know. The children find us doing it and they just back away slowly and just don't make eye contact with us. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... Music Month, of course, is an amazing, exciting thing. And it's, you know, there's lots and lots going on at APRA. We're really delighted to have announced the finalists for our Children's Music Awards for APRA Best Children's Song. So my hearty congratulations to Kath B and Doug Stenhouse, who are finalists with their song, I Love Life. Um, and to Emily and Charge Looker for their song, Quatermarko. And also to Ben Sinclair and Jeremy Dillon for Tony the Tiny Pony. Um, we'll also be announcing our Country Music Award Best Song um, finalists next week, so stay tuned for that. Um, we have opened the Silver Scrolls for entries. So as Diana was saying, the Sounds Contemporary Award is also included in the Silver Scrolls Awards Night. Um, so that's very exciting. We've already got awards, uh, sorry, we've already got songs pouring in and I'm hoping that there's going to be lots of amazing entries because there's so much great new music coming in. I too am delighted that um, Reb Fountain and Rhea Hall have created amazing new albums that I've been absolutely loving. I'm so happy about Troy Kingy um, winning the Tate Music Prize and Millie Lovelock for her acknowledgement as well and Shona Lang for her acknowledgement. I, you know, there's just, I love Music Month. Um, I would love to remind everybody also about our accountancy helpline that we've got up and running at the moment. There are slots available for people to speak with the team at Entertainment Accountants. Um, and I think perhaps as time goes on through this lockdown period, and we get more aware of the effects that the reduced work that we're, you know, the, the reduced activity that we can undertake is kind of becoming more real and the consequences of that are becoming more real. I think that having a chat with an accountant is a really good idea to think about how you can, you know, approach that and get advice and thoughts about tax and all of those kinds of things that are involved with your small business that you run when you are also a creative performer and composer. So please do um, take advantage of that service by contacting Gabe Andrews at APRA, which um, for whom the uh, email address is gandrews at apra.co.nz. Uh, in other news, we will be announcing a masterclass which will be taking place next week online about the ways in which we can start thinking about articulating this musically, this experience that we've had. Um, and there'll be incredible musicians on hand to talk about ways in which they think that we can do it. So for people who are looking to expand their creative ideas and get some inspiration, there's gonna be a really super lineup of people talking to you next week on Thursday at 3 p.m. And we will announce all of the details of that in the coming days. And um, I think that's pretty much all I have to report. So I will be, Coming back to you next week with my recorder playing. <laughs> um, also, Victoria, has there been a decision about the Silver Scrolls ceremony yet? Or is that just on TBC while we wait to hear what's going to be happening around the levels? It is still to be confirmed as we wait to hear what's happening according to the levels. Yeah, this, we just want to make sure that we um, are making the best possible ceremony and the best possible celebration of all of these incredible songwriters according to what we can actually and realistically do. Great, thanks so much for that. Um, Peter, what has been, um, before you go into what's been happening in the world of music house, which is quite a lot, um, what New Zealand music have you been listening to? Kia ora tato, everybody. Um, 
yeah, I'm just thinking about that you know, lugubriousness and porridge, you know, the, the, that kind of porridge feeling that you can sink into when you're in lockdown. Um, the thing that's been pulling me out of that um, when I've been doing the dishes is um, the best you single. I'm uh, dying to believe that they, they, they rec um, released at the beginning of April. I'm really hanging out for the new album in July um, from them. And also you know, very mindful of the effect that what's been happening has had on, um, and had on them. It's been quite, you know, quite considerable. Also, a uh, bit of a dark horse. I'm also hanging out to hear, I've heard snippets of it. Um, Rodney Fisher from Good Shirt and Mixed Veg has been, uh, with some um, online encouragement, shall we say, um, been, uh, been encouraged to do a cover of um, Ricky Morris's Nobody Else. And it's turned into quite a collaboration and I have a suspicion that it's going to be epic. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what he, um, he, comes, up with, um, he comes up with there. Uh, speaking of which, um, I know a lot of people have been um, receiving new music uh, recently there, you know, the, the, since we've moved into level three, things have been delivered. Um, one of the things that has come out of this for Music Helps is the willingness of businesses to affiliate with us because they've really wanted to help the cause and they've really wanted to um, contribute to the Music Helps Live campaign. Um, one, of the, one of those businesses is um, Nura and they do uh, an amazing set of headphones and they're giving out $100 of every um, set of headphones that they sell to the Music Helps Live campaign. So if you're looking for something to listen to all your new music on, then you, um, you, could, you, you could do much worse than check them out and check out the deal that they've got on, on hand. Also, if you're now having to work from home, there's Work From Home Desks. That's a company that's um, pivoted from making road cases, believe it or not. And of course, that business came to a screeching halt when we went, um, when we went into lockdown, but they've pivoted to make desks, amazing desks that you can use at home. Uh, and also, if you're looking for some help with your MIDI controllers and pad controllers and electronic drums, Melodics uh, provide online courses and all of that and uh, assistance software. And again, they're donating to us every time everybody takes a um, uh, takes out a subscription there. So there's some things to things to check out there. Um, I think the big news, particularly for this week, is that we have uh, started, or we're we're well into the second round of our. COVID-19 emergency grant funding. So we've um, that will, at, the, at the end of this process, we will have put about $200,000 out into the community. It's a $500 emergency grant. There have been a couple of questions about it. We opened it on, on Monday at 8.30. Uh, we are processing applications in batches of 100. It was fully subscribed by 9.15. There is, these grants are being um, snapped, they're, they're being applied for extremely rapidly. Um, so we have managed to make it through the first lot of uh, processing for that first batch. And we are reopening for applications at um, tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. So if you know someone that's in need of the grant or you think may um, qualify for the grant, please check out, um, check out our website for some um, more information on that and be aware that we are reopening again tomorrow at 8.30 and we fully, fully expect that, that grant will be fully subscribed by 9.15, 9.30. Um, it's just that popular, I'm afraid. Um, traditionally, Music Helps has always been about working with individuals who are experiencing financial distress or, um, or mental health and well-being, well-being distress. Um, we're, we're looking at that, obviously, all the time. And I wanted to say that, um, just following on from Kath's point about Save Our Venues, we are in contact with the Save Our Venues Collective, and we hope to be able to announce um, the results of those discussions very soon. And that'll be a, a move um, away from what we've traditionally done. But we're also very excited about that. We're also very excited to see the success that all of those booster campaigns for the local venues are, um, are having. Um, of course, it is New Zealand Music Month. Um, for those that don't know, we are about to announce that uh, New Zealand Music T-Shirt Day has been brought forward into New Zealand Music Month. Um, it will be, um, it, the, the date will be the, the 29th of May. And we're looking for all your ideas about how to celebrate New Zealand music through the wearing of t-shirts. Um, and what we're looking for is for people to wear those t-shirts and um, take, take images, take photos, post them along with the hashtag NZ Music T-Shirt Day and uh, have, some, uh, have some fun. And if you have the ability to fundraise a bit, that's absolutely fantastic as well. Also something that's been a regular fixture for us and a focus for New Zealand Music Month and we were a bit sad about is the legendary New Zealand Music Month quiz. Some of you may, be, may have been involved in that. 
um, well, we're very happy to say that, again, we're in discussions to try and resurrect that in an online form for this month. So stay tuned for more information about that. Um, something else, I want, uh, as, we're, as we're all pivoting um, our music businesses to online as much as we can and streaming, we've been in, t we've been in uh, discussions with um, Give a Little, who are a great partner of ours, and they have come up with some fairly exciting um, ideas around the integration of live streaming with the Give a Little platform. Um, so if people would like some more information about that, they, if, please feel free to um, contact, um, uh, you know, contact the charity. Um, through our website, and perhaps we can um, help out a little bit there. Um, and that's pretty much us. Thanks so much, Peter. Um, just tell me, on the um, grants that are reopening again tomorrow, um, and you're obviously anticipating that that's going to run out, will there be um, an, a further round, like a, a third round? What we're doing with all of the rounds, as we did with the first one, is that once we pro once we process it, we also process all the feedback that we've had, had with it. We've seen how it's operated. We've reviewed and then worked out what our next step is going to be, and that will be the um, and that will be the next stage for us. Uh, the Music Helps um, Charity Board of Trustee Trustees is meeting weekly, um, and they're keeping us under very close um, close watch. Absolutely, there will be another initiative. Whether it will be um, an exact repeat of the emergency grant, as it is at the moment, um, that that, um, that that remains to be seen. But uh, keep an eye on our social media accounts and our websites and just keep an ear to the ground and we'll announce it as soon as we know exactly what we're doing. Awesome, thanks so much for that. Rose from uh, Creative New Zealand, uh, welcome. What New Zealand music have you been listening to? Oh, you're on. Rose, sorry, you're on. You'd think I might have that sorted by now. Yeah, Morena, um, Taro for Lava. Um, it's interesting, I've talked to a lot of artists over the last few weeks, um, so we've had a lot of inquiries about our grants, and the thing that's really come through is what um, others in this who have been talking about, and that is new collaborations. There's some really interesting um, work happening out there, people reaching out to others that they normally wouldn't work with and um, and coming up with some really interesting ideas. And that took me along the path of watching that um, um, video chat on um, the spin-off with Finn Andrews and Marlon Williams, um, which then took me to listening to um, one of my favourite albums from The Vales, which, was, um, which has the single... Um, Jesus for the jugular, and that's a song I, I still love, and that um, takes you back to about 2006, I think. So, um, so that's been, yeah, I've really, really enjoyed that. Also, a big shout out to our women artists. Um, I love Rhea Hall's um, album. I love the work that people like Bella Kalolo is, is doing, and I saw a wonderful collaboration that both of them did in the Tairapati Festival last year, um, the Aretha Franklin tribute. So just thinking about that, and also seeing um, Shona Lang the other night, um, and just thinking about that that whole, you know, great breadth of um, women artists that we have in the industry, that's kind of what I've been reflecting on also while we've been um, thinking about New Zealand Music Month. So um, just moving on to um, where we're at now with um, our work at Creative New Zealand, um, we're continuing to our phased approach to delivering our emergency response package. We're still in phase one and working to develop phase two. So there's, there are no, a few questions around that. Um, phase two will provide support through to December of this year. So um, anyway, while in phase one, we're still working on our rolling assessments and decisions, and you can apply any time up until the 18th of June, one o'clock is the deadline for that. Um, We've had a huge initial applicant response to our emergency response package. So our team is working really hard to ad advance the emergency mahi and build on the nearly three million that we've dis distributed or ap approved to distribute by last Friday. So um, just to give you a breakdown, um, 
That's almost 1.6 million across 405 emergency relief grants. Um, and that's the top up for loss of income. And that includes 120 recipients who identified music as their art form. So we're getting a really big response from the music sector, which is really heartening to see. Um, if you want to check out the total number of grants and art form breakdown, we're updating our website <clears throat> on a weekly basis. We're not including people's names, but we're um, providing the numbers and the breakdowns. Um, across our arts continuity grants, we've um, allocated 1.3 million, and that's across 57 of those grants. That's the short-term projects up to um, 50K. And amongst that, at last Friday, there were eight um, music projects and some really interesting stuff happening. So we do publish those if you want to see what's coming through, that's on our website and we update it every Friday afternoon. So um, as a matter of interest, we normally get about 2000 applications annually across all our funding programs. We've received three quarters of that number within the first week of opening our emergency response package. So um, just to say to people who are still waiting, thanks for your patience. Um, we're just taking a little longer than the timeframes we've set ourselves because of the um, sheer volume. And if you are thinking of making an application, um, it's really helpful if you do pull together um, a CV of what you've um, been doing. Because one of the things that slows us down a little bit is having to do Google searches. Um, just to verify the information. Um, so um, just to give you a quick update on phase two, the framework for developing phase two was endorsed at the Arts Council meeting on the 29th of April, and there's a summary on our Creative New Zealand website about that. Um, the strategy is still very real and relevant, but bearing in mind the context we're all operating in, is dramatically different. Um, the Arts Council will consider the approach further when it meets 26th of May. And by then we'll also have more information about how to inform our plans, including the alert decision, which is due on the 11th of May, and also the government's budget announcement on the 14th of May. So we aim, we aim to announce broad details about phase two by the end of June. Um, so it also to update you on videos and online ZUI, um, we've made a step-by-step -step video to walk people through the emergency relief grant application process. And there's a link on our website, if you want to check that out. Um, we've also, um, We'll soon have a similar video about applying for the Arts Continuity Grant. We really value the chance to have um, contact with um, our arts community through these music hui and also through the various other Zoom um, hui's that we're doing. So we've now set up a, um, a regular meeting for Pacific Arts which is right, actually running at this time. It's 11 o'clock on a Thursday. Um, we do one with Natoi Māori as well, and Community and Youth Arts, which we've just started doing on Fridays at 2. So if anyone's interested in joining those, the information's all up on Facebook. But it's a really great opportunity for us to talk about what we're doing, but also to get input from what's happening from people out there and just to talk through with them what the issues are. Um, our hashtag TFA, Thankful for Art Advocacy Campaign, is still running. We're run into week three of this four-week digital campaign. So what we're doing through this is sharing work created during lockdown by artists from Aotearoa, and it's also for ways, ways for people to engage in art. So you can hear directly from a range of people sharing their mahi. Um, Earlier this week, we shared a video of Hinawehi Mohi sharing her beautiful Waiatant Ata to Mai. And you can check that out online. 
So the campaign's running on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can also see the response from hundreds of everyday Kiwis to that um, campaign. So yeah, if you want to check those upcoming ZUI, the links are all up on our website, other information on our website. And also if you do want to contact somebody personally, um, emailing that um, COVID-19 um, email address will take you through to one of the people on the team. Great, thanks so much, Rose, um, for that. I just have a quick question about the CV yes. um, that to hmm. for the emergency response package. Yep. How in depth do you require that, or do you just need it to be top line? It doesn't need to be a lot of depth. It just needs to show that you are making your um, living through being an artist or working in the, in the music industry. That so for instance, if you're a musician, you could say, um, this is my band name or musician name. I've released these sort of albums, I've released these singles, I've done these gigs here or taught here. Is that the sort of thing you're after? Yeah, that sort of thing. And then linking it through to any websites or Facebook pages, that's helpful. But we're also um, very aware that people have a portfolio um, approach to their careers. So they often, they might be a drum teacher in a school during the day and be in a couple of bands that um, they, you know, delivering gigs from on a regular basis as well. It's just a matter of listing it out, just so that we get a sense of the, the broad range. And we certainly wouldn't expect that you're necessarily doing one thing. I mean, there, you know, that, that there's generally, as I say, a range of music activities that an artist or is doing to, to make up their, their full-time work. And also, if you're an arts practitioner, maybe you could say, I'm a music manager, these are the bands I manage, I've done this yeah. from this year to this year, or um, I'm a front of house or um, a crew member, and these are the different gigs I've worked on or the companies I've worked on. Yeah, just absolutely. Had, well, yeah, I've just had a few questions around that, so I'm um, glad I got the opportunity to ask. <laughs> Thanks so much for that um, update, Rose. And um, Lucky last, Damien Bourne from Recorded Music. Um, what music have you been listening, New Zealand music have you been listening to? Uh, thanks, T. Kia ora, everybody. Um, I've been getting into, well, since last Friday, uh, the new well, debut album from A City of Souls, Synesthesia. Um, hard rock, got a progressive rock, Marcus Powell's act. Um, fantastic stuff, love it. Uh, also, revisiting Alien Weaponry, I love it. I love that, I love that album, so good. And looking forward to hearing more from them. Uh, over the last few days, though, have had a re been revisiting some uh, New Zealand drum and bass. Uh, a, a tip off from Mr. Riddler there uh, about a story that's going to happen on the weekend on Radio New Zealand about the popularity of drum and bass in New Zealand, and it's <clears throat> clearly it's a, a genre that's enormously popular in this country. So I have been kind of revisiting, providing some data for that story overnight, and. Um, discussing with my team about their perceptions of electronic music which were eye-opening to say say the least they know who they are um i but it's really fascinating to see uh of it is enormously popular and of in the awards uh there's been nine TUI winners and 54 finalist spots across the charts there's been five number one albums that were drum and bass 10 platinum or multi-platinum albums six gold albums 33 albums that entered the top 40 uh, three platinum singles, eight gold singles, and 13 singles that entered the top 40. So it's an enormously popular medium in New Zealand, which we probably already know, but just seeing the statistics, I was like, hmm, that's impressive. And as a genre, been going probably 25, maybe 30 years in New Zealand, maybe not that long, 25 years, let's say. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good. It's a genre that's certainly embraced by the country. And I'm a fan myself. <laughs> of Recorded Music New Zealand, a quick update. Um, we have been making uh, some great progress uh, with registrations and people checking in on our distributions from last year to see whether there's any monies for them there. Uh, we've certainly had a massive surge in interest, so thank you for everyone for, for doing that and doing a lot of admin work. We know it's administration, but it's great, um, certainly if we can provide you some with some distributional payments. Um, we also work in half hard on bringing our distribution this year forward uh, at this stage i'm hoping for mid-june um, so do make sure to 
continue to look at any recordings you released or in 2019 and make sure that you're registered with us. Um, we are looking quite internally just that, you know, the impacts of COVID-19 on our, our um, income and subsequent distribution that will happen in 2021. So the core of Recorded Music Museum's uh, collective licensing income and our distribution payments is made up of public performance, which is generated from the work of One Music, which is our collective organization with uh, APRA, uh, the licensing of cafes, bars, and gyms, and so forth. Um, as everyone knows, that that's the, those, the retail and hospitality sector is greatly affected and hasn't been uh, able to open for five, six weeks now. Uh, and even in alert level two, there will be some restrictions. So we're monitoring that um, because it is a considerable um, input to both Recorded Music New Zealand and APRA and then the subsequent distributions out to songwriters, music publishers, recording artists and record companies and distributors. So that will affect in 2021 for us. Um, so we're just monitoring that situation as to how it progresses and the music use in that space. Um, also, being cognizant of the broadcasting situation as well, who have also suffered from uh, the loss of advertising uh, through the lockdown period and how that's affected their own incomes um, for everyone's awareness. And it's mostly common knowledge, but uh, we license the broadcasters on a percentage of their income. So if their incomes are affected, our, our license fees are affected, which means a subsequent um, uh, effect to the distribution payments we make out to artists and, and recording artists uh, in the next year. It won't affect the distribution payment we make this year, which will be the biggest one we've ever made, um, because that's if that's related to income that was collected last year. So that's good in this time period where everyone's um, kind of ability to generate income from other sources, such as live, for instance, we will, as Recorded Music New Zealand in June, um, distribute the biggest payment we've ever made. So that's that's a positive, and I hope that's um, that works well for people in the industry in June. Um, on awards fronts, uh, a big congratulations to Troy Kingy, echo, echoing that, uh, fantastic winning the Tate Music Prize, and uh, also congratulations to IMNZ and, and Dylan and, and Mikey and the team for putting on such a great event, and good to see from all of our perspective what a, what a virtual event could look like, and a really well done one as well, so fantastic, good stuff for IMNZ. Um, Yes, the Children's Awards finalists were announced. Uh, Victoria's mentioned the APRA ones, uh, just from the Children's Best Artist, Recorded Music New Zealand's TUI Award. Uh, the finalists were Anika Moa, Captain Festus McBoyle, and Chris Sanders. So congratulations to all three artists there. And also to the Pacific Music Award finalists that were announced as well um, for the Recorded Music New Zealand TUI uh, Best Pacific Album. It was Church and AP, Olivia Fawai, and Poetic. So congratulations to you three as well. Looking forward to hearing how those events um, are going to go uh, once, once finalised. Um, also, and uh, Victoria mentioned this too, but the Country and Jazz Awards finalists will be announced shortly and likewise um, how those events play out in the virtual space over the coming weeks and months would be good to look at. Uh, but IMNZ set the standard, so thanks for that. <laughs> um, in terms of the main music awards, uh, we are still in development. Um, well, we've got some exciting ideas in the works and what it will become in 2020. So it, it won't be the same, but that's clear. Uh, we won't be a large scale event, but it, by November, things may well be different again. So we're, we're in a state of fluidity, I suppose, in how we prepare and, and craft that. But certainly we're going to have a focus on it celebrating our artists like it usually does and their music, but also take out a real charitable focus and supporting the great work of Music Helps in our music community. So. Um, We'll continue that that vein that's been uh, really good and really heartening to see from uh, all of us in the industry rallying in behind the work of Music Helps and making sure that we can give back to the community that we all work in. Um, just finally, as updated last time, we have put forward on behalf of the non-government funded industry orgs an outline to government of the impacts on our industry and some sector asks. So. Uh, we've made that available on the website, and I know many of the other organisations have also available on the website. Um, no new news on that front to share, other than we understand many of the asks are being discussed and assessed directly with uh, ministers and officials in, in kind of a targeted, direct way. Um, there are separate and direct discussions going on with uh, representatives in the live music community, um, the Promoters Association, uh, as well as uh, the Event Association. Um, 
we're pretty optimistic uh, that there will be a generally positive reception, uh, and there has been thus far in terms of receiving it, uh, to those asks, but we'll share info once we, once we have more to share. Uh, but at this stage, nothing new uh, to report on that. Um, only other thing is we published a general summary on all of the assistance available from the industry, including music helps and others, and then direct government support, including the wage subsidy scheme, the leave support scheme, the cash flow support for small businesses, the business finance, finance guarantee scheme, and other support for small music businesses and tax support consultancy as well. Um, we tried to make that as accessible for everyone and easy to digest. So go have a look at the website, um, our Recording Music New Zealand website, uh, if you want to kind of get an understanding of what is available to individuals working in the music industry, but also small businesses. Well, Thanks. that's great. Hey. Thanks so much for that, Damien. Um, we're beginning to rapidly run out of time because there's such a big panel um, this week, but I've got a few questions. Um, and I think they're all actually for David. <laughs> um, if an artist has submitted an application for the latest funding round where, where the featuring artist has also an application, would that be detrimental to the application? That's a good question. Um, it is a bit tricky because each panel has a different, um, each independent panel has, a, has an opinion on that. I think given the numbers that we're dealing with. So just to let you know, when we did our last round for New Music Single, we had 280 applications and there'll be, while there are more grants this round, 40, it still means that 100, 240 songs are not going to make make the funding, get the funding, unfortunately. So it, I wouldn't say it's off the bat detrimental, but I think if it, it sort of can sometimes dilute, you know, we work on a voting basis for those panels and there's seven votes and it may dilute the backing for the song between the different panelists or the songs so yeah it is a good question there's no uh right or wrong answer it is you just have to have a really good think about that because and what you're probably what your what your real priorities are great um the next question i'm a music video producer in christchurch many local artists in this town have found it very hard to get funding in this town, is there any way we can boost opportunity as all of my clients have to fund their own videos? This can restrict quality due to budget. How can we change this? Um, I think it's, you know, it's one of the things that we're doing is looking more at the data of applicants and and, and things like geographical spread, um, ethnic diversity, gender diversity, et cetera. So, but it, you know, it is a problem in that a lot of the music business is, is focused in Auckland. I mean, we're, you know that's that's just the fact of the matter and, and it does it can influence things so we are conscious of that I think the main thing is the track record and getting you know I look at artists like say Jed Parsons who seems to be quite prolific and quite sort of you know I was gonna say exposed I don't know if that's the right terminology but um, he's got great exposure at the moment but that does take some time to work on uh, a set of great songs um, getting some professional assistance around you to try and get your message out maybe looking at publicity as an option to try and get um, some more noise happening um, but it is it is difficult for any artist who doesn't have you know to build a track record from scratch um, again I don't have a, a, I wouldn't say there's any bias per se but sometimes it's just a, a thing about perception is that if you haven't made a lot of noise yet it's hard for people to connect to your music Thanks, David. And um, last question. Can you please advise regarding the NZ... Oh, no, sorry, wrong question. Let's uh, go back one. Um, where would I see anything written about an album being made in a local centre by a group of local musicians? Although it won't get funding from NZ On Air, is it worth NZ Music Month airtime, struggling to get any support during or the celebration of Support Local? Is that a question for me? I could actually put it out to the panel. Do you want me to repeat the question? Yeah. It is a bit complicated. Um, where would I see anything written about an album being made in a local centre by a group of local musicians? Although it won't get funding from NZ On Air, is it worth NZ Music Month Air time struggling to get any support during the celebration of Support Local? That may be something that potentially they could um, apply to the Creative New Zealand. Um, around um, and I guess for airtime 
potentially they could refer to last week's um, seminar that we did with the radio programmers, where there was a range of um, commercial radio programmers, student radio, and also iwi radio, because of course, um, when it comes to radio play, it is, does come down to format. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh, Victoria? oh, sorry, Kath. Yeah. I was going to say some other outlets like um, Under the Radar, Coop mm -hmm. Domain, maybe Sniffers, uh, getting press releases to stuff. You know, there, there is still quite a lot of uh, media out there as well. But, you know, you're competing against a lot of people for small space, so it's not always easy. Definitely send it to us. Um, so julia at nzmusic.org.nz and we can get it up on our websites and across our channels. Um, we've got a decent amount of followers across the social platforms. So uh, Angel is happy to share those things as well. And I just think it's really, um, people don't know what they don't know. So, so trying to get the word out there as much as possible. And then hopefully we can all help and share and make things more visible. Victoria, you had something. Uh, yes, I was just also going to suggest that they get in touch with Silka at New Zealand Musician. Okay. Yeah. Advocate for local music and always happy to write about music that comes into her space. So she'd be a great person to get in touch with and send the music to. I would also say that, you know, there's something about release schedules. If you're thinking that you need to release your music, think about whether or not now is a really good time to do it. If there's lots and lots of music being celebrated and released right now and you feel as if it's going to be hard for you to be heard above the noise of all of that then wait wait for a month or wait for two months and perhaps consider even looking at the music again you know we've got this time this creative time where we're all kind of staying inside and um, we have a lot of time with ourselves to think and there's never any harm in going over that music again and listening to it and being as objective as you can and writing more and take the opportunity to be creative with the time and then maybe give yourself some space to send that to, to send that music out into the world a little bit later or if you're also having trouble getting um space for it in people's minds start sending it to friends getting their feedback getting their thoughts seeing if they'll share it with their friends and start building up um, an audience amongst the people that you already know and then the people that they know and then the people that they know. You know, there's the, the word of mouth is extremely powerful. Yeah. It's just my advice. And we can't forget all the blogs as well. I mean, uh, people like music.net.nz, Moments Pass, Hit Our Band, Libel. You've got 13th Floor doing amazing work as well. So there are lots of online platforms that are looking for new music and are hugely supportive, pretty much exclusively run by big music fans. And also um, the Music Managers Forum have um, great mentoring opportunities where you can be teamed up with a music manager or a publicist that can help you put together your timeline for a release, but also talk to you um, and give you contacts um, if they have them um, for the various blogs, um, et cetera. So that brings us to the draw of the, um, the end of this um, panel. Thank you everyone for um, taking part. Um, thanks to Waiedi from um, Akudos, Grace from the MMF, Dylan from IMNZ and Lydia from APRA AMCOS for their help putting this hui on. Um, much aroha to the panelists today. Um, thanks for all your updates. Um, have an awesome music month, everybody. Get out there, support local, stream local, buy local. Um, and um, have a great, hopefully, last week of um, Level 3. We will find out on Monday. Um, Thanks again. Mm. <sighs>